Welcome to the Solution Plus Battery Training Course. I'm Mikan Ponens, the Battery Systems Team at Ideada, and today I will talk about batteries for electric vehicles. Specifically, this presentation will focus on the type of the batteries that they are, the technologies and the materials, to end up with the safety and validation standards. First, let's look at the type of the technologies that are out there. This is a brief description of a battery, a schematic. It's an electrochemical storage device, where the electrical energy is stored in form of chemical energy at the anode and the cathode. During discharging, lithium ions flow from the anode to the cathode through the electrolyte, while electrons flow through the external circuit, powering the device of interest. On the other hand, during charging, an external potential is applied and lithium ions and electrons flow the other way around, from the cathode to the anode. There are four main components of a battery. The cathode, which is usually a mixed metal oxide, ultimately defines a lot of the properties of the battery, such as range, durability and performance. The anode, currently graphite, also they are moving towards uh, silicon composites nowadays. And there is the electrolyte, which is the lithium ion carrier. It's currently a liquid with a mixture of lithium hexafluorophosphate in organic carbonates. And finally, the separator, a membrane allowing lithium ions to pass but blocking the electrons. This figure shows a broad roadmap from the batteries in general. Before lithium ion batteries appeared in the 80s, the market was dominated by lead acid, nickel cadmium, and nickel metal hydride. Those were very low energy densities, good enough for consumer electronics, but not suitable for electric vehicles. Once lithium-ion technologies were discovered, the amount of energy of batteries per either mass or volume increased drastically, which means they could be used in mobility applications. There are several technologies out there, which will be presented in the next slide. That makes lithium-ion batteries a big family and very application-dependent. And finally, research is moving towards a next generation of lithium batteries, for example, lithium sulfur and lithium air batteries which will show extremely high energy densities and capacities. Those technologies are still in the research phase and not, are not expected to be commercially available in the near future. There is some also trends in trying to remove the liquid electrolyte and replacing for a solid state. This will reduce the total volume and therefore increment the volumetric energy density of the current lithium-ion batteries. Those spider charts are the graphical illustration on how versatile is the lithium-ion technology by simply changing the cathode. We could achieve different properties suited for different applications. The properties are specific energy, is the total capacity of the battery, basically how far can it travel, also known as the range, how many miles can the battery deliver. This is important especially for medium and large EVs. Specific power is how this power is delivered, how easy this power is delivered. This is important for city cars and buses where you are constantly accelerating and braking and not so much for driving long distance. Cost is another important property, include the raw material and the processability of the battery. Very important for mass production but less important for top of the range cars like should be a Ferrari. Lifespan is the durability of our cycling to reach the state of health of 80%. Performance is how the battery performs at low and high temperatures, for example. This is very important uh, when cars are sold in extreme climate areas or non-conventional non locations. And finally, safety metric is how thermically stable is and the chance of not getting a thermal runaway event. This is an intrinsic property of the material, but fatal events, like accidents fire, will be mitigated with the right engineering modifications at model and battery pack level. So, even an LFP is considered safer than an NMC type at vehicle level, if the correct engineering measures have been put in place, the battery will be as safe as the other. As a rule of thumb, the higher the nickel content, the higher the energy, or the higher the range, the battery is, but it lowers their stability. 
Finally, I just want to point out that LTO, lithium titanate oxide, is not a cathode itself, but the anode that could, be, could replace graphite. Not only the materials used will determine the battery properties and performance. The cell formats have also an impact. There are three main cell formats, which are cylindrical cells, such as the ones found on Tesla Model 3. They have a very low manufacturing cost and are well optimized. As cons, they are inefficient at packing. Pouch cells, such as those found on the Nissan Leaf, they give a lot of flexibility of the design. On the other hand, they have poor mechanical strength. Finally, prismatic cells, such as the ones found in BMW i3, they are simpler, with good mechanical strength and have a good packing. But on the other hand, they have very poor flexibility in design, they are very rigid. So, having reviewed those technologies, let's find out what the battery is suitable for different applications, in this case, the electric vehicle. Here is a short summary of the preferred application for each battery type depending on the vehicle use and size. Know that this is just generalization, meaning each application must be, must be looked carefully into. Microhybrids, usually driven in the cities and not doing many miles, tend to prefer cheaper and high power solutions, such as LFP. As the powertrain is getting more and more electrified, from hybrids to PHEV, both high power and high energy solutions are used, depending on the preference of the OEM. Pure electric vehicles, especially medium and large sector, they tend to prefer high energy solutions, such as NMC, due to the highly yearly mileage rate those vehicles are expected to have. That means you can drive as much, more, much more miles per single charge. However, when it went to public transport sector, especially in buses, a relatively safer or, thermic, or more thermically stable solution is preferred, such as LFP again. In addition, due to the amount of raw materials needed per vehicle, costs are also important metric to consider for buses. Now, we will look closer to the safety aspects of the battery. For an average vehicle driver and passenger, the general public, the main risks of batteries are fires that can happen suddenly. This is an example of a Tesla Model S in China that started emitting a white smoke and on fire shortly after. This is an example of thermal runaway of a cell and sub subsequent propagation. This phenomenon could happen due to an active abuse, to, such as a shock, or due to a cell deterioration that suddenly breaks out. So, let's review the possible sources of abuses that can happen. The first type of abuse is mechanical abuse. This means inserting an object, such as a nail, or impacts, like crushing. This leads to a deformation and separate separator breaking and ultimately internal short circuits. Then there is the electrical abuse, such as an overcharge or overdischarge. This leads to dendrite growth and piercing the separator, which leads to, again to internal short circuits. Finally, th there is the thermal abuse, such as overheating the battery. It means exposing the battery to extreme high temperatures, which may result in separate melting and ultimately internal short circuits. Those internal short circuits could lead to thermal runaway, an exothermic reaction, generating toxic smoke, fire, and explosions. This thermal runaway, as it generates heat, could propagate to neighborhood cells, leading to more smoke, heat, and fire, and the complete destruction of the battery pack. This is what happened in the previous slide with the Tesla Model S in China. So, to ensure that those safety hazards are well managed, several safety standards or protocols have been developed around the world. As you can see in this map, safety standards vary widely across the globe. For example, in North America use SIE and SAN standards, including the J2464, J2929 and the SAN 2017-6925. Europe, in the other hand, is regulated by the UN ECE R100, currently on amendment number 3, which came into force uh, early this year, while China has the GB38031 in, 
that came into force in 2020 as the main standard for testing batteries. Other countries have their own regulation, but they follow more or less the R100. This is the case of India, for example, where AIS 38 and 48 is analogous to the R100 in Europe. A list of mechanical safety tests for each regulation are shown in this slide. Vibration tests, mechanical shock and mechanical integrity are the most common adapted safety protocols to test on batteries. For vibration, the battery is placed in a shaker and different vibration profiles are applied. For mechanical shock, the battery is launched at speeds against a wall or simulating a collision. It's also called a dynamic shock. For mechanical integrity, the battery is squeezed at a given force. It is also known as the static shock. The battery is considered safe because if there is no fire, explosion or loss of isolation after those tests. A list of thermal safety tests for each regulation are shown in this slide. Thermal shock and cycling, fire resistance and over temperature are the most commonly adopted for the regulators around the world. Thermal shock introduced to the battery to extreme heat and cold in short periods of time. Usually, temperature range will be as low as minus 40 degrees to plus 60 degrees cyclic over a period of days, with a maximum of 30 minutes between each extreme temperature. Fire resistance consists in testing the battery upon fire exposure and check if it is stable for a period of time. This is almost certainly applicable for all batteries with the, where the battery is located under the driver or passenger seat, but not when the battery is located in the roof, such as the case of electric buses. Over temperature tries to ensure that the battery is safe when tested above a maximum operating temperature while cycling. It is worth to point out that thermal propagation tests, where a thermal runaway event is induced, are considered more and more by legislators, and despite it is only required in China nowadays, it will be required in Europe and deployed elsewhere. There is a trend in the regulation bodies to include those tests to ensure driver and passengers are safe in event of total battery failure. A list of electrical safety tests for each regulation are shown in this slide. Short circuit, overcharge, over discharge and overcurrent are the most commonly adopted tests to ensure the battery is electrically safe. Short circuit ensures no fatal failure is reaching even in event of touching positive and negative terminals externally. Usually, fuses are used as a protective measurement. Overcharge, overdischarge and overcurrent tests are performed to ensure that the battery is safe even when put it outside its working voltage and current operational windows. Usually, the BMS is the protective measure, which open contactors when unsafe conditions are met. And finally, there is a list of environmental safety tests. In this case, it is China regulation that requires most of the environmental tests, such as water measure, salt spray or altitude test. 